Are we missing the point of money and are we saving too much and not spending enough on the things that matter? That's the premise of this week's book, Die With Zero by Bill Perkins. This is a reread for me. Again, there's quite a you know, a small handful of books this year that I put on my list that I wanted to reread because they were so impactful and I wanted to refresh myself. Um, and this is one of those books that's so different and so challenging and so inspiring. Um, so what I want to do is, since we don't have a ton of time, is to just give you the concept um, and walk you through it. Again, if you're new to these videos, we're doing a 52-book challenge. We're reading a book a week. Uh, my entire book list that's updated is at grahamcochran.com slash 52 books. It's just a list. There's, there's no opt-in or anything like that. Um, but the whole point is I wanted to read more this year, and hopefully I'll inspire you to read more as well. So in the money category, uh, Die With Zero uh, came out right during COVID. Um, it was written right before. Bill Perkins, m- mega successful hedge fund manager and energy trader. has got a lot of money. Um, and what I love about this book is, is that he challenges our thinking on what is the point of money. Quick disclaimer he makes in the book, and it, it's going to be probably missed here in a short little you know episode, is this book is not for you if you are struggling to make ends meet. This is not for you if you are living in poverty like a lot of people around the world are. Uh, the, the concepts here are for people like many of us and many of you who listen to the show uh, who are successful by most standards of the world. Um, especially if you're a business owner. If you're a business owner and you've been making things profitable for a while, you have a rare gift, which is the ability to generate wealth. And what we tend to do, as he talks about with the story or the fable of the ant and the grasshopper, right, is that the grasshopper spent all his time not working, not saving up grain, not harvesting, right? He just spent life and ate it all up. But the ant, we, we applaud the ant because he saved up during uh the good season, so he had plenty of food in the, the winter season. His premise is that we're too much like the ants, especially the wealthy. And you see the wealthy that say, I will retire when I have a million in the bank. I'll retire then when I have 10 million in the bank or when I have 100 million in the bank. Or it's an income thing with the entrepreneurs. I'm going to keep pushing my business until I'm making seven figures a year. And then you get there, and you're like, well, I'm going to keep pushing until I make eight figures a year. The, the goalposts keep moving. And his premise is very simple is that um, if you die with money left over, it was a giant waste. Uh, Let me read this to you. Um, I'm going to go backwards in time. Because his premise is like uh, Vicki Robinson's book, I think that's her name, Your Money or Your Life, is that money represents life. It represents time, right? $100 isn't $100. It's maybe two hours of your life if you make $50 an hour. So his premise is if you spend hours and hours of your life acquiring money and then die without spending all of that money, meaning you die and you have a nest egg left over, then you've needlessly wasted too many precious hours of your life. There's just no way to get those hours back. If you die with a million dollars left, that's $1 million of experiences you didn't have. And if you die with $50,000 left, well, that's $50,000 $50,000 of experiences you didn't have. No way this is optimal. And his premise is because money isn't the point of life. The point of life is experiences in his premise, right? Because buying an experience, he says, just doesn't buy you that experience in itself. It buys you the sum of all the dividends that experience will bring you the rest of your life. He calls this the memory dividend. You have a trip to Europe. You you have that backpacking experience. You have that family reunion. You have those special date nights with your daughter or your son. You don't just pay for that experience one time. You paid for it. You got it once. But now you can reflect on that experience, on that memory over and over and over again. So you actually get a return on the memory. It's like a stock that pays a dividend. It will pay you for eternity. It'll pay you. You can be in your deathbed unable to have new experiences and recall past experiences and benefit from them. That's the memory dividend. So his whole premise is that our life is made up of memories and experiences. And so we think too much about making money, but the purpose of money is to have experiences. As he said, um, you should be focusing on maximizing your life enjoyment rather than on maximizing your wealth. Those are two very different goals. 
Money is just a means to an end. Having money helps you to achieve the more important goal of enjoying your life, but trying to maximize money actually gets in the way of maximizing, or excuse me, achieving the more important goal. So always keep this end goal in mind. Make maximize total life enjoyment your mantra, using it to guide every decision. And I feel like this picture will kind of maybe stop here, for, and I'll give you a final couple of thoughts that I have. This picture he paints is because he, he's he's going to give you a premise. If you read the book, there's a little bit of a formula that's really loose, but it's helpful to think about you need to find your your peak, and it's an age, not a number. It's actually an age of when you're going to stop accumulating wealth and you're going to start to decumulate or start to spend the money so that you – Optimal, optimally die with zero. There's obviously a lot of questions that he answers all of them. You don't know when you're going to die. What if you want to give to charity? You know, what if you have a lot of you know medical expenses as an old age that you can't prepare for? He covers like all of those very practical questions. So I'm just, you'd have to read the book if you're like, this is stupid. It actually makes a lot of sense in terms of giving you the freedom to actually enjoy the wealth you're creating sooner while you have the health and ability and the time to take advantage of those experiences. There's an optimal point for all people, and it's going to be a little bit different, when you should probably start spending that money more than you're accumulating and adding to it because you'll get to a point where you have your wealth that's growing if it's invested, where you actually can't spend it down fast enough. And the data shows that people spend less in retirement. They don't spend more. They actually spend less. Uh, and it's probably because their health declines, they can't go take experiences. So you could save all this money and then you miss the point at which you could do certain experiences that you wanted to do that require a certain amount of health. And that's the challenge of life, right? He has this beautiful three triangle formula. I've mentioned it on the show before, but there's when you're young, you have lots of health, but little time and money. When you're really old, you have lots of time and money, but little health. And in the, in the middle of your life, you have an optimal amount of time to health to money. There are these three triangles. And you really want to find that sweet spot where you begin to decumulate and spend. And I love this picture because I think it's profound. It helps you think about it maybe in a different way. So many people are willing to spend tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to prolong their life for just a few more weeks. Imagine you're at the end of your life. They're willing to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to prolong their life for just a few more weeks. Think about it. That's money they spent years or decades working hard for, and they gave up years of their life while healthy and vibrant to buy a few extra weeks of life when they are sick and immobile. If that's not irrational, I don't know what is. <laughs> it's provocative, to say the least. But I think the premise of this book, Die With Zero, Bill Perkins, is what, what are you making money for? Just make sure you're making money for the right reasons. And, and the problem is when you're younger, you're like, I want experiences and money will help me get there, which is rational. Once you start to achieve some level of success and you have money coming in and you're saving, you, then you start to think about, well, how, how much money do I need to sustain this lifestyle? And what if this happens? And what if this happens? And you start to hoard and accumulate. It, it just kind of happens naturally. And then you get to a point where you're like, well, I don't want to spend that money yet because um, maybe I'll need more money than I think I'll need. I don't know the future, so I might as well have more and more saved up, and we just miss out on our lives. While we have a lot of wealth, we don't have a whole lot of life. So the optimal way to live is to be saving, yes, giving now. Don't wait to give when you're dead, which I love that. He's like, it's not really called generosity if you give when you're dead, which I think is 100%. I say that all the time. But spend the money now, too. Not all of it, but spend it have experiences, create memories now. That's the most important thing. And you don't need to spend money for all memories or experiences. We know this, he mentions that. But like the point is, live your life for the experiences you wanna have with the people you wanna have them with before you miss out on opportunities to do those things. That's the point of money, is to aid your life. Don't give up your life just for money. All right, there we go. Die With Zero, Bill Perkins, definitely worth reading. Have an amazing rest of your week. We'll see you in another episode real soon. 